a shot could be today an Instagram post that goes viral. It could be a YouTube. It could be when you did. You just told me off air. You did the podcast with Rogan in December, and everybody listened to it. And then the guy upstairs that you've been with the agency for four months called down the other guy. Said, "Hey, you didn't tell me you had Joey Diaz." And then your ball gets rolling. You know what I mean? Like when I started, a shot was you is is a step by step set of shots. First, you try to get an audition for Montreal. So you get the audition. That's a part of the shot. Then you audition for Montreal. And then they say, yes, you can go to Montreal. So that's another step or phase of the shot. And then when you're at Montreal, you kill. And then then you got meetings. And after the meetings, you get a a TV show deal. And then you see if your show gets picked up to even get shot. That's another part of the shot. And then... You see if the show gets picked up to go on the air. And then you see if it lasts on the air. If it lasts a year or two years or three years, your shot is over. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody will remember that show. It's the show that was on nine to ten years or eight years that people will remember. So, But then now you can kind of fail upwards, I feel like. Now if you are on a show, you can parlay that now more and say well i was on this show and people are looking for people there's more platforms there's more channels there's more shows so people are like, all right let's get that guy he was on that he was sanctioned by these people on this network or platform so maybe we can use him on ours you know what i mean but it the, the terminology shot has kind of changed well now shot for me man mm-hmm. your big break right you know how many big breaks i thought i was gonna get 30. 30. You know, I mean, let's take the longest shot, for example. Mm-hmm. I thought that was going to change my life. Right now, that it's been on the air for 13 years, we can get out of the way. Right. How can it not change your life? Look at the cast. Look what Adam Sandler damage he was doing in 2005, right. 2004, 2000. Anything he touched turned to go. Right. While I was shooting the movie, they said, it's all over. Like, it's all over, right? Like, <laughs> Once this movie comes out, you write your own ticket. Here's the fucked up thing. I forgot you was in the movie. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> That's fucked. the fucked up thing. The crazy thing is that you, I remember the movie getting released and mm-hmm. just sitting at home and looking at the phone and nobody called. And then Nick Turturro got a bunch of movies and Lobo got a bunch of movies mm-hmm. and Tracy Morgan got put in fucking... Dirty Rock and Terry Crews, forget what happened uh, with Terry uh, Crews. Yeah, that guy. And there I, didn't, I, was, I forgot he was in this movie. Yeah, there I was, the fucking ugly chick at the dance. Did you feel bad that when you saw everybody getting uh, shit? Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. How would you feel if you thought this was it? Your life was going to change. Right. When I say change, what was I? Did I think I was going to be driving a a convertible fucking Maserati with 20 people in the car? No. You know what change was for me? 20 weeks of work. Right. Uh, 200 people coming to my shows, maybe. Mm -hmm. Getting an agent to book you. Getting a stronger theatrical agent. Right. None of that happened. Did you have an agent at the time when you got it? Yeah, he was a bum then. And he's a (laughs) bum now. He's like Tony (laughs) Montana and Scarface. (laughs) You know, it was... It It didn't change him that you got that. It set me fucking... Like the movie came out uh-huh. in May, and by October I was a fucking mess. Damn, son. Like the phone hadn't rang, no agents came and spoke to me, you know. But if that was somebody else, I'm not crying. Right. If that was somebody else who got it, it would have been all over. It would have been a billboard. It would have been a variety thing. Right. Congratulations to this guy, our client, for doing this, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just the weird, the things that didn't happen. And I'm not crying. I got the experience of my life. Right. But when I was doing that movie, a wise man told me, he pulled me aside one day, he goes, you, you're doing great in this, mm-hmm. but this is this has to take time. It's got to take cultures. Right. And recently, I saw it. You go on the fucking Rogan podcast, mm-hmm. nobody knows who the fuck you are. Mm-hmm. They look you up, and now they go, that's the fat dude from the longest yard. Oh, shit. Now they research more. Yeah. So what I learned was everything comes back in cultures. Right. 
Every, that mad TV you did that nobody fucking saw, mm-hmm. now one night they air it at 11 o'clock and there's a million people home because there's a snowstorm and you're a fucking star. Right. So everything takes cultures. Everything comes in cultures. Mm-hmm. What you did in 2007, if it was good, history's going to come back to repeat itself. Right. You know how many times people have called, hit me on Twitter and said, I didn't know you were my name is Earl. They don't know. Yeah. So it comes back. Now they'll go pay the $5. Right. Ah, now that's validation. Ah, that's my favorite show. Now I got to go see him. Mm-hmm. All those things. And for me, it was not a movie, right? Like for me, it was not a movie. Uh-huh. It was not me killing on the road. People fucking hated me on the road. Yeah, so. It was telling a hooker story. Telling a, ho- a story about me mugging a hooker. <laughs> so it blew me away. And you told that on the podcast. I told it on the podcast. Uh-huh. The and, only place you could fucking tell. And them. next thing you know, there was a hundred people at a show down in Hollywood cheering to tell the hooker story. Yeah. But the, like the one thing I, I I think you guys not not are missing, but I maybe don't realize how big it is because I'm almost two years in. Mm-hmm. Like I see people like a shot for me is you letting me do the Wilbur is Felipe letting me do a guest spot at Caroline's, like that sort of stuff that it, like to me because like I, I've seen people who are and that's oh, not a shot. No, to me, it feels like a shot. That's just an opportunity for you to look Learn into something. the ocean from the fucking beach and go, oh, that's what the bottom of the ocean is. Oh, no, but like. I don't mean I'm going to get an agent and no, blow no, up. No, no, I just no, mean like it's no, it's the no, next no, no. step. It's like a. No, no, no. Right now, you got no shots in your future. <laughs> the you don't only shot that you got shot? in your future is getting on stage right now for the next two years until your tongue. You don't think there's through. levels of shots? No? There's levels of shots. But for you, a guest spot at Caroline's isn't really going to propel you. It's just to show you what it's going to be like. It's like when Jim Valvano made his players cut the net down mm-hmm. before the season began to show them what it was to show them what oh, to okay. feel like when they cut the net down. Right. That's what that's for you for. That's that's fuel in your engine. That's fuel in your engine. Right. Yeah. When you go up in front of twelve hundred people and you bomb. You're going to go home, and that's fueling your engine. I'll never be mad at you because we all went through that bomb. Mm-hmm. The first time we got up in a big theater and we throw in, they gave you a guest spot, and you fought, and, and you're excited, and all of a sudden they didn't laugh at you. Now you're back to square one. So it's really not a shot. These are opportunities for you to peek behind the curtain and go, oh, that's what it's like to go up in front of 1,500 people. Get some experience that's what and it's learn. Like to do a Friday night. Yeah. That's what it's like. You're at the two year mark. Where all you need to do is get on stage, put your head down. Oh no, and I, I don't expect anything. But to me, that's because because I see people at open mics who have been at open mics for ten years and haven't done a real show. Because so to me, that's a show. I mean, maybe in ten listen, years, I'm, you control in this business. You control what you want to do, and it starts by the word no. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.